What's up guys, it is the T-Ball and I am back with another video. Before I start, if you guys could hit that like button and subscribe for more NBA, Brooklyn Nets, and Jeremy Lin videos. Your support is greatly appreciated and we're trying to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of this year. Well, it's not looking like we can uh, hit that, you know, um, you know, every sub counts and uh, your support means the world to me. Also, check out brook-lin.com for more um, Brooklyn Nets and Jeremy Lin articles, videos, and all that other great content. So today, I'm going to be going over a quick breakdown of uh, Lynn and the Brooklyn Nets lose to the Orlando Magic 118 to 111. So just going to go over some key box score stats really quickly. Jeremy Lynn 20 minutes, 17 points, 3 assists, 3 rebounds, 1 turnover. He's he was a minus 9. Uh shot 7 of th 13 from the field, 1 of 2 from three point range and 2 of 2 from the free throw line. Brook Lopez 22.6 rebounds, 1 assist, 1 steal, 5 blocks and he fouled out of the game. Um and uh, Louis Scola, 11 points, and Trevor Booker with 2 points on 0-5 shooting. So, for the Magic, 21 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 blocks, and 2 steals for Vucevic off the bench. Um, let me see. Ibaka, 18 points, 10 rebounds, 1 assist, and 5 blocks. And Fournier with 21, and Augustine with 17 points, 6 rebounds, and 4 assists. So, you know, tonight was a really tough loss. It was a winnable game for the Nets, and, you know, Winning t tonight's game would have been great for the Nets' momentum, as they would get some more confidence in you know their their talent, their team, and that would have you know hopefully led to even a longer winning streak. But now they're back to you know uh, losing one. They're on a losing streak now. They are now eight and eighteen, and it's gonna be really tough if the, the Nets want to try to somehow climb back to five hundred. So the Nets were in control uh, throughout most of the second and third quarter. They um they lost the lead going into the fourth and the Magic got some you know home cooking in my opinion. If you guys don't know what that means, it it, bas it basically means the refs were getting were giving the the Magic the home team some pretty uh you know pretty good calls favorable calls for them. Refs used suck chance started to break out late in the third, and I feel like that's what uh, really you know turned the game for uh, the Magic's uh, benefit. Um, only one foul was called on the Magic in the fourth quarter, which was kind of ridiculous in my opinion, because I thought there was there were quite a few moments, especially with Lopez, you know, in the paint. I think there were you know a couple times at least where the Nets should have been called, in my opinion, uh, for getting fouled and get you know potentially two free throws, but that didn't happen tonight. And you know you have to give the the Magic some credit. The Magic were very good in handling the ball, especially in the fourth quarter. They only had seven turnovers in the game. I forget how many the Nets had. I know it was in at least double figures. And they they really did hit some key shots. Um, I know Fournier hit a three at the end. Um, but a specific play I really just irritated me was when the Nets were down two with about, I say, a minute or so remaining. Fournier was, quote-unquote, fouled by Sean Kilpatrick. It should have been an offensive foul. It was obviously Fournier pushed um, Kilpatrick out, and then they called Kilpatrick for the foul. And I was just like, wow. It, it was just beyond me I'll, I'm very disappointed um with the refs and you know that the Nets lost as well but you know uh, it is what it is and just the Nets really just have to move on get a win on Sunday's game against the Sixers and you know try to build some momentum they will be playing the Raptors on Tuesday and they're they've been very high I think they're gonna win tonight as well so you know we'll see how things go but for, for our boy Jeremy Lin he played very well he did he did play some shaky defense on Augustine Late in the fourth, he let Augustine hit a wide open three and get a f drive by and get a floater on, on him. So I know Lynn is coming off uh, a game he didn't even play, you know, the Lakers Nets game. So Lynn, I can, you know, maybe it was a little rusty as well. He He's still battling a sore back, I'm pretty sure. So we'll see how that plays out tonight and tomorrow. Um, just, yeah, he missed two miss, he missed, uh, he missed two shots. In the the last, I say a minute and a half in the fourth, which kind of sealed the game for the Nets, uh, or basically the Magic, you know, sealed the win. And but overall, you know, he was pretty good in 20 minutes. I mean, uh, he's still facing the 20 minute minute restriction, which sucks, especially for his for his stats as well. But he still finished with 17 points, three rebounds, and three assists. Imagine if he played 40 minutes, and he was 100% healthy, potentially could have had a career game. Um, considering his uh, pace for right now, for um, for for basically only playing 20 minutes tonight, 
So, and he did shoot 7 of 13 from the field, 53.8%, very good percentage, and he also did hit a 3 at the end, so it's nice to see, you know, Jeremy get his, uh, you know, you know his jumper back. In his first three-point attempt, he looked, it looked very off, he didn't have, like, barely any lift on his shot, but at the end when he got the 3 up, nice lift and a uh, nice form, so hopefully Lynn can uh, keep up his shooting. He's been play he's been shooting very well, and, you know, in general, playing very well since his return. Um, um, yeah, I'll be interested to see, uh, after this game to see if Lynn's okay, make sure his back is, you know, in a good condition, hamstring's good, and hopefully he can just, you know, make it through to, uh, Sunday's game against the Sixers. Potentially, he can get maybe his minutes restriction, uh, you know, kind of, uh, loosened a little bit, maybe to 24 minutes or something like that, maybe playing... The, f the last six minutes of each quarter, potentially, or, you know, hopefully Lincoln starts soon. I mean, Whitehead, he has done, you know, a decent job considering he's a rookie starting for the Nets since Lynn's been out, but, you know, he's just not, he's just not that good right now, to be honest. He did have eight assists tonight, but he, he's just, he doesn't exactly make the offense flow when he's on the floor. It's pretty stagnant, mostly going to either, you know, putbacks by other players, Lopez isos and that's really how the offense gets going with Whitehead on the floor. You know, it's not really a diss to Whitehead. He's only a rookie, and he'll definitely learn once you know he gets more experience and years in the NBA. But for now, he should not be starting for any team. And yeah, so I also did not like seeing uh, Dinwiddie play tonight in his five minutes. He went, um, I'm pretty sure it was two turnovers, and that's really it. So he did not play well at all. Uh, hopefully, he can, uh, you know, maybe get some garbage time minutes in a. Uh, some game soon and get some more experience playing with the Nets and learning the offense a little better. So the Nets um, play on Sunday, as I said before, against the Sixers. The game will be on 6 p.m. Eastern time in Philadelphia. Hopefully the Nets can break their um, their losing streak on the road and take a win against the very beatable Sixers who have the worst record in the Eastern Conference. Their playoff chances, the Nets' playoff chances, are they are fading kind of, they're dissipating and if they basically need a miracle, to be honest, if they want a, a chance, even a slim chance to make the playoffs and go back to 500. But crazier things have happened. We all know Jeremy Lin, Lin Sanity run with the Knicks. So who knows? Maybe if Lin gets fully healthy, they can go on a run. But don't get your hopes up. And I hate to say it, but I'm, I'm, I'm already, I'm kind of looking forward to next year in the 2017 to 18 season with hopefully Jeremy Lin being 100% healthy. That's adding some new players to surround Lynn and Lopez with uh, with uh, the team getting more experience playing together. And Lynn, you know, even though he'll be 29 next year, he's still relatively young. Um, I like to use Kyle Lowry as an example to, to show people who, who think that once a guard hits 30 years old, they're done. No. Lowry, 31. He's having, you know, what's he averaging? Like 28 and 5 again. He's playing very well. And I think Lynn, in my opinion, is better than Lowry. In many aspects of the game and overall I think Lynn has a potential you know to get better stats than Lowry and I think is just in general a better player than him but don't get me wrong Lowry's an amazing player but I think Lynn's you know a little bit higher at least so um yeah so guys don't worry even if they don't make the playoffs this season which they probably won't um you know just look forward to next season Lynn getting another year with the Nets more experience and he'll, he'll hopefully play great you know what I mean so that's about it thanks guys for watching if you guys did enjoy be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more brooklyn nets nba and jeremy lynn videos your support is always appreciated and drop a comment down below your thoughts on the game i love talking to you guys and um yeah so let's hope for a win on sunday once again thanks for watching and i'll see you guys soon peace